Hi everyone, so this is really exciting. I'm going to be launching my first ever foundation, Seamless Skin Foundation. And I wanted to make this video today to give you a brief overview. I'm worried it's not gonna be that brief because I'm trying to tell you as much about it as possible. So I am going to probably break this video down into sections and time codes so that it, if it does end up being really long, you're able to skip to different chapters. But I'll try, I'll try and be as succinct as I possibly can. So this is my first ever foundation. And I know that a lot of you have already tried the sample cards or have been asking us about the sample cards. So I did release those first. You know, my philosophy behind that is that you really need to try foundation before you buy it. And if you're in the UK or even in London, then my pop-up has now been open for about a week. So I've had lots of customers coming in and trying the foundation and being matched. But obviously if you're not in the UK, you're not in London, then the sample cards are going to be a a really invaluable tool because you're able to try the formula and to also try the shades. So that's the first thing that I really wanted to do. I know it's slightly back to front, not the way makeup companies normally work, but it's very true to who I am and very true to my philosophy. Um, so yeah, what is my first foundation? Well, it's a, a classic foundation in that it's a medium coverage. It's very, very adjustable that you can either dial it down or dial it up in terms of coverage. I'm gonna show you all the different ways you can do that today in this video, but also you can slightly change the finish depending on what skincare you use underneath as well. So the, the finish of this foundation is not very dewy and it's not super matte. It's something right in the middle. It is a soft focus, I'd say, I guess soft satin, very skin-like finish. Um, it's also self-setting so you don't have to use powder. And I know that some people have messaged me saying, oh no, I wanted you to launch um, a glossy skin tint or a tinted moisturizer tinted moisturizer first. Well, I always do things, you know, the hard way and launching foundation and creating a foundation from scratch, which is what I've done with this. And I'm gonna explain how I came about this formula is so much more difficult than doing a tinted moisturizer. That's not to say that I'm not working on one of those as well. And that is coming a bit later, but this for this, I just wanted to do just a really, beautiful foundation. I'm a makeup artist, so in my daily job, I am trying to make people look great. People who not necessarily have perfect skin. Of course, I do a lot of editorials and I do use tinted moisturizers and glossy skin tints, but you know, very often for a certain effect, but for myself and certainly for some of my clients, I like something with a little bit more coverage. So I wanted to start with something that was more of a true foundation, if, if that makes sense. So how did this come about? So this is the story behind it. This story started way back in about 2000 and I think 12 or 13 and I was doing a red carpet event and a big one, very big one, very scary, huge. And I remember I was using a foundation which was the same as a foundation that I'd used before, but it was a new version of it. So it was a brand that I kind of trusted and it was a foundation that I used quite a lot. And I sort of tested it out and everything seemed fine. Anyway, put the foundation on the person and then she got her hair done and it took about 30 minutes, I'd say, because makeup was looking beautiful, I was very happy. Hair was finished off, there was a bit of a fitting for clothes, the next time I looked, the color had completely changed of the foundation. And this wasn't like oxidation, it wasn't classic oxidation, but I was really taken aback by it. And I was like, wow, and I couldn't change the makeup. I had to then kind of buff over it, tan up the body. And to be honest, the whole thing looked fine. Like you'd never know. Everyone said she looked beautiful and it was great. But for me, it was the most stressful, most horrendous thing that ever happened. And it just got me thinking about um, a lot of the formulas that were launching at that time. And I was like, what is it with this? It's like, it's not classic oxidation because it's not like it's, 
It's not the difference between wet and dry foundation, which is like the difference between wet and dry paint. You know, wet paint has a lot of light reflection, so it looks lighter. Dry paint obviously looks deeper. If you've ever done paint swatches around your house, you know, when you're choosing colors, you'll, you'll know that. It wasn't that. And it wasn't also the classic oxidation that we've grown up sort of as makeup artists understanding. So it wasn't like gradually throughout the day, it was becoming darker, or it was changing color with the natural oils in the skin. So I kind of had a feeling I knew what it was, but I wasn't 100% sure. So I called up a friend of mine who was the president of the Cosmetic Scientist Society at the time. He was also a lecturer in cosmetic science and I'd worked with him previously on a brand. And I said, look, next time you're in London, come over to my house. I really want to ask you about something, about formula and um, I've just, I've got this, I need to know as much as I can about this. Anyway, he came over and I explained everything and he was like, oh my God, this is a lot to take in. You know, this is a lot of kind of ideas that are coming out. And I was really challenging on what was going on. So after that, he introduced me to a cosmetic scientist based here in the UK. And we just started making small batches and it was literally like, researching ingredients. Every time I went to trade shows, I would never be in the section where you were looking at brands or manufacturers that had their own formulas. I would always be in the raw ingredients department looking for pigment coatings, looking for different ways of putting together these water-based foundations with pigments that could be stable. So it was a very fun, enjoyable kind of geek project at that time. We're making small batches of foundation, trying them out, just seeing what happened. I would try them out on myself, on, on people I work with, and just really kind of figuring out, you know, why it was happening. And I was, I'd like to do that as well because as a creative director over the years for lots and lots of brands, I mean, obviously the brands that we know about. And then I've also worked behind the scenes for lots of brands. So it's, I'm always interested in formula and what, and what's happening. And as well as working with the cosmetic scientist that I'd been introduced to, I was reading a lot of papers. So coming out of the London College of Fashion, when you get the new cosmetic scientists, I'd read their theses and I found one great girl that was kind of writing a lot about sustainability and um, replacing different ingredients with new ingredients. And also I employed a young cosmetic scientist that I'd met a couple of years before who actually won a competition on my blog and then we became friends. And she came to work here as well. So we were really just playing, I'd say, really experimenting, going quite deep on trying to find out what was causing this color change. Anyway, the next thing I was asked by Longcom to be their global creative director, which was such an exciting challenge for me and job. And I, I put all of this on hold. So it was really only in late 2017 when I wanted to go back to working on my own brand again. And I was going to launch my lipsticks in 2018. And around that time, 2018, and I, I spoke to Longcom and um, I just said, I want to launch these lipsticks. And, um, you know, they were so lovely about it and said, yeah, you know, it's fine, you can you can do it. So I was able really to kind of go back into this project, which was amazing because quite a lot had changed from when I'd first started researching it. So there was not only new research, not only new papers, but new ingredients. And I just kind of picked it all up again. So I started making batch after batch after batch after batch again using all of the new knowledge that was really kind of bolted on to everything, all the research that had been done before. And having a lot of makeup artists try it out, makeup artist friends, uh, makeup artists I work with on my team, and then just lots of different people. So friends of mine that, you know, had ac acne, eczema, rosacea, and just trying out to, you know, I wanted I did want it to be water-based and I wanted it to be, but not too runny. So, you know, getting the consistency right. Um, I didn't want it to contain any alcohol at all, any fragrance, any perfume, any talc, any essential oil. So, you know, figuring out if that was even possible and, and, and still good. And then of course, trying it out in different lights to make sure it looked good. 
And also the main thing is trying it out to make sure it looked better after half an hour than when it first went on, because that was something that I really felt that was a need that I had for my work, that it didn't change color. So I wasn't gonna have that horrible shock of an orange face after 30 minutes. And also that it wasn't gonna flash back because red carpet work and that it was going to last as well on the skin. It wasn't gonna be like a, you know, a, a tinted moisturizer thing where they just kind of sinks in and there's nothing left on the skin. So all of those things, having that skin-like finish that wasn't too oily, wasn't too matte, wasn't gonna flash back, um, got better with time, <laughs> um, didn't contain all of these things that I thought would really make it not suitable for sensitive skin and was a consistency that I thought was very blendable and easy to wear. So that all took time and what I had at the end of it was a formula that I was very happy with but was also my what we call IP, which is intellectual property. So what I've ended up with is a formula, a foundation formula, which is mine and is not like anything else on the market because it isn't anything else that's already on the market. I didn't go down that route and um, I almost like to challenge myself anyway. So being able to start a formula from scratch, from literally, here's a pigment, here's one drop of pigment, let's try that in this. Um, was really exciting for me and challenging, but exciting. So I had my formula, I had somebody to industrialize it for me and let me keep my intellectual property. Next question was, how many shades would you like to launch with? Well, I'm a small brand. I don't even have a marketing department. I don't have a CEO, well, I guess I'm the CEO. And, but I'm a makeup artist. So I said, I want to start with 40 shades. Well, there's a couple of raised eyebrows, but um, I was like, no, 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 I have to, I want to have all of the shades that I struggle to find and I have to mix a lot within my kit. So there are certain shades that I find that I'm always having to mix all the time to create certain skin tones and I would love to be able to have those shades ready mixed in my kit. I wanted to make sure that I covered lots of different skin tones. So from really, really light to very deep, I wanted to get some of the more, quite a lot of the neutral shades that I felt were missing, a couple of the olive shades that I really felt were missing and for, for me in my kit. And just to really cover those shades. And I remember we did our first casting actually Gosh, when was it? Probably in January. Um, no, it must have been before then, December, because we had a lockdown in January. In December, and we had about 250 models come to my studio and throughout three days, and we were trying all the colors, and we found that the shades really worked on everyone. We could find a match for every model that walked in, and that was when I was like, okay, these are the shades I'm gonna launch with, because I feel like I'm really kind of, capturing a lot of different skin tones here and I feel really comfortable about that. In fact, when we then went to shoot the campaign, which is on the website now, which we did in August, by then, because it was August and we called all the same sort of, not just model agencies, but also we had friends of friends and people that suggested mothers and daughters and all kinds of stuff. Um, but a lot of people were away. So um, we ended up with about, I think, 55 models coming to the studio. And again, we were able to find everyone a match. And I only really wanted 40 models, so one for each shade. But I thought, well, everyone looks really good in their shade. So I ended up shooting all 55 models. So they are on the site and you can have a look how um, the colors work across so many different it's such a diverse casting, you know, from age groups to skin tones, to mothers and daughters, to, I remember thinking that even with the, with the lighter shade, uh, shade one, that I, we couldn't actually find anyone that was that color. And then I went to the gym one day and I saw a girl in the gym, the, in, the, in the cafe bit of the gym. And I thought, well, she looks like she possibly could be. And um, I showed her the shade and everything. I said to come to my studio and, um, 
So that's how kind of how I found shade one. I think one thing that's really important to say as well, because I've noticed this a lot in um, the communication that I've been getting, the emails I've been getting, is that if you are the lighter shade in a brand or the deeper shade in another brand, it doesn't mean to say you're going to be the deeper shade or the lighter shade in my brand, because it is a very wide selection of shades. So to give you an example, um, I have seen a lot of people ordering set one and people coming to the pop-up and saying, well, I ordered set one because I'm usually shade one or two in a brand. And then actually we're looking at thinking, well, you're shade 10 in, in, in this, this brand or you're, I'm shade 11, for example. Um, so I've seen actually girls that, and women that are sort of my skin tone and they say, I've just ordered set one, one, two, three, and shade one, two, three, and four. And I'm thinking that's much, much, much too light. And because it is a formula that is very soft focus and skin like and it does have that blurring effect you don't want to be using a shade which is seven shades too light exactly the same happened on the other end of the spectrum i remember when we did the casting and the model that we assigned to shade 39 and um we kind of you know put the foundation on she loved it she went you know it's great that you've done um, I color this deep and it's really working so well for me. And I said, well, you're actually your shade 39. And the model was like, no way. She said, well, can I call my flatmate? She said, my flatmate's a model and she can never find a shade deep enough for her. So her flatmate came in, her friend came in and put the foundation on her shade 40. And she was just so overwhelmed. She's like, I've never actually had like a foundation, liquid foundation that just completely fits my skin. So because you are a particular number in another brand doesn't mean to say you're going to be the same kind of number within my brand. And I think that is definitely worth, definitely worth mentioning. So in terms of undertones, which are all listed on the site for each shade, what does that actually mean? Well, if you think that every skin tone, no matter what tone, is a mixture of lots of different colors. And when we talk about neutral, we mean that all of those shades, the blues, the yellows, all of the colors, the reds that are in that, create a color which none of the particular shades feel particularly dominant. That's what I would call a neutral. So it means that you don't look at it and think, well, that's, I see the yellow or I see the red. It's not completely dominant. Um, so I've chosen to do, start from a point of neutrals. So I have a whole selection of neutrals in there. Then I have neutral rose or neutral reds at the deeper end of the spectrum. And they are ones which do have the feeling of the pinkiness or the redness, but again, it's coming, it's a neutral red or a neutral rose. So it's not overwhelmingly pink or red. Um, then I have neutral goldens, and that's the same principle, that it does have the feeling of the warmth and the yellow in there, and you can see that that is slightly dominant, but it's not completely dominant. Then I also have rosy red, which means that it, you do feel that the red, the, the pinky tones are more dominant. Golden, again, you feel, you see that goldenness straight away. Um, peach or terracotta, which means that there's quite, you see the yellows and the reds above other colors within the formula, um, going from light, which is peach, or through to terracotta in the deeper tones, which also really quite good at corrections and correcting skin tones as well. Um, and then I have olive. So whether it's in the lighter shades, which is more, olive is made up of blue and yellow. So, which obviously makes green. And some olives can be slightly more on the blue side, which is you make a green, but it's a fraction more blue. Or I've done true olive, which is green, and then golden olive. So there's different variations on olive. So if you look at a sample card like this one, you'll see that that is a, that's shade number 16, that's a true olive, which looks quite green you see that this one is a rosy color, which definitely has the pink tone to it. You see that that's a golden, which has the yellow, and you see that this is a neutral golden. I hope you can see that. I mean, looking at them like this through the bubble is, you can't really see the shades properly, so you do need to open them up to see the colors because this obviously changes the color slightly, but you get a rough idea of what the undertones would be. A second thing that I would say is that when you're trying out your cards and when you're figuring out which shade, 
don't try them on your wrist or your, sorry, the inside of your arms. It's such a different color to your face. And I've seen people not only just trying them out here and then saying, well, there isn't a color for me, but also putting them on quite, um, let me find my color because putting them on too thick and with a water-based foundation, if you put it on really thick and wet, you're just going to see the undertones really almost exaggerated. So you do need to blend it out. Even if you start with a thicker stripe, to actually see the color, you need to blend it out. So onto the bottle design and the packaging. So it comes in a beautiful card box, really well made. And inside you have the foundation bottle. And I know there's been lots of speculation about, well, how does it stand up? It's such a different shape. It's not a usual foundation bottle shape. What's happening? Um, that was totally my intention. I didn't want a regular foundation bottle that I've seen before that I can buy off the shelf. I wanted to tool my own bottle and I work with an amazing glass factory, actually. Uh, they do the most beautiful artisan bottles in, in Northern France. So I work with them and I work with a designer to get um, the shape of it. It was very much for me inspired by modern sculpture and people like Brancusi and um, I just thought all the things that I love in my vintage collection tended to be at the time quite different and revolutionary and they're ones that have continued to be iconic so that was why I wanted something different from everything else on the market. So if you want you can keep the um, the bottle of the the bottom of the bottle on your dressing table and just have it sit like this which is nice but it's actually meant to sit on its side so if you look at the back of the bottle, there's like a, a piece here, which is really lovely actually to put your thumb on while you're using it. But it's also what you can put your foundation on. So it rests like that. You sit it down like that. So it's slightly up, tilting up. And then it's this kind of shape and you can see the light through it. It is quite an unusual shape. It feels amazing in the hand. It's so ergonomic, it feels really substantial and nice to hold. It's very soft, it's very smooth. And also once you've taken off the lid, you can see that it's a pump, it's a good size, it kind of nuzzles and nestles really into the palm of your hand. So once you've finished using it, just put the lid back on, you line up this section actually, which is the little edge there. And then as I say, you can either put it back into its little plinth or you just sit it down and it just relaxes like that, a little bit like a sleeping head. So on to application. I'm just going to apply my moisturizer all over, my priming moisturizer. I actually had worked on two formulas, one for normal to dry and one for more oily skin um, to work perfectly with this foundation, but they're not quite ready. So I'm going ahead and launching the foundation. You can actually use your regular skincare with it. So that's not gonna be a problem. If you visited the pop-up, actually, you would have tried the um, the real moisturizers and primers because uh, all the artists there have been using them. So in terms of what you use underneath, just do your regular skin prep. And of all the people that have tried this foundation, I've had so much feedback on what different people have liked to use underneath it and what's worked for them. Obviously, it depends on your skin type and also to a certain extent, the effect that you want, the final effect that you want from the foundation. As I've said, it's not a dewy um, finish. It's not a flat matte finish. It's right in the middle. It's, a, I guess, a soft focus satin. However, you can slightly tweak that, skew it more towards the matte or more towards the dewy, depending on what you use underneath and how you finish your skin. So different feedback we've had from different people trying it and certainly in the beginning when I was using it a lot on clients. So things that I've used, I've used the cream by Augustus Bader. Um, on more dry skins, I've used the Ember Elise. And then a friend of mine that's been using the foundation for about a year who has rosacea, has actually been using the Lip Car La Roche Posay balm underneath. Um, and sometimes she uses the Glossier Future Dew. Um, also oil-free moisturizers, this one by Cosmetic Immunity, I really like. And then sometimes when I've been working with clients where I want a really matte finish because they're on television or they're really under 
strong light. Um, then I've used more of a mattifying primer. Some people also mention the Tatcher primer. So really it's about kind of using the, the skincare and the prep that you normally would underneath foundation. And in this case, it really can help you achieve the exact effect you want because the foundation is very customizable. So I've used my, this is more of a normal to dry primer, well, moisturizing, priming moisturizer, I'd say all in one underneath. So I've got a kind of more um, well moisturized effect. I tend to like to start with one pump and you'll notice that I've made the pump size quite small. So that's all that comes out in one pump. You can see that it's not a great deal. The reason I did that is because I feel sometimes um, you can be a bit heavy handed and this actually goes quite a long way, this, this foundation. Obviously, if you want more of a full coverage effect or you know a good medium coverage effect, you can just keep building. Personally, if I'm on an off day when I'm just maybe going to my studio or just going to do a makeup job, I will only use one pump. That's just my preference. And I often use it just with fingers as I said before, this is shade 11 because shade 11 is my great color for evening out that redness around my chin and nose, but also it really blends well with my neck. This foundation applies best in thin layers. Even if you end up building it up and building up to a really good coverage, it's still better to apply it in thin layers. And it's really about smoothing onto the skin. So you want that kind of effect. Obviously you can do it with a brush as well. And I'm launching my a flat brush because personally I found that of all the brushes that I tried this with, I found that using a flat brush was just easier for me. And I had a lot of makeup artists trialing it out right at the beginning. And the majority liked a flat brush. But having said that, a lot of the consumers that tried it out, a lot of my friends, they also liked a fluffy brush. So I feel again, there is that customizable approach with this foundation that what one person likes is not necessarily what the next person will like. I'm just gonna keep going now. I'm gonna put another two pumps on. I might use all of this, but just want to show you how you can build up. So this is how I do my red carpet clients if I just want them to look completely flawless, but for their skin to really look like skin. Just very soft focus, really. It just, it just takes the edge off. That's how I best describe it. If you do have very large pores, which I do around sort of this area, or just problematic areas, as the foundation is starting to do its thing, I'm gonna keep calling it that, but starts to really mesh with the skin, just, even if you finish blending, just go over and sort of do a final tap right at the end. And it just kind of, I don't know, it just diffuses and kind of blurs all of those, well, pores really, you just don't see them anymore. It does quite a mad blurring second level skin thing. In fact, before I finish this makeup, I'm actually going to show you a couple of other effects you can get. As I say, it depends what you use underneath. It is very adaptable. So I'm going to quickly just take this off and show you how the finish looks when you use a very, very rich cream. So if you're more of a dry skin person and how the foundation looks if you use a mattifying primer and a lot more foundation, so a fuller coverage and a matte finish. Just so you can compare it with this, which I'd say is more of the classic kind of soft satin finish. So this is three pumps of the foundation on top of a much less juicy cream. This is more of an oil-free, almost mattifying sort of priming moisturizer. And you can see that straight away the effect and the finish is quite different. This is much more, feels much more velvety and um, looks a lot more matte as well. And this is how it looks on top of a very rich moisturizer. So a moisturizer that you would wear if you had more dry skin. To be honest, this is too rich for me, but it just shows you that the finishing effect or the look of the foundation can change 
depending on what you use underneath. I'm just gonna add on as well, this little hack that you can do. This is not really what this foundation is about, but if you want to, I've got um, quite a juicy cream here, moisturizer. I'm gonna put one of um, one pump of foundation with it and mix those together. And then what you can do is use it as a very light, almost glossy tint. You're not gonna get the coverage. However, it does still have that setting ability. It takes longer, but if you want to almost, either if you've got a drier skin or you just want less coverage at the weekend and more shine, then this does work really, really well. So this could be um, like a day look or a weekend look, and then you can use it more in the classical way for when you want a bit more of a polished face. And that's it as a tinted moisturizer. And then, yeah, you can definitely feel that it does still, I can feel that that is still starting to set. But it's still gonna have that shine though. I'd say that was about maybe two parts moisturizer to one, yeah, two thirds moisturizer to one third foundation. Or you could do 50-50 as well, which would also work if you wanted a little bit more coverage, but still have it kind of sheared out. So that's just a little hack you can do. So I've just applied it again, and this is about two pumps on top of my regular moisturizer, so it's not too dewy and it's not too matte, so I'm getting the finish that I really like from it. And I don't wanna to be too prescriptive because I think if I say use one pump, use two pumps, use this type of moisturizer underneath, in a way, everyone will have a different way of enjoying it and wearing it. And I certainly don't apply it necessarily on myself the way I do even on my clients, depending on what they're doing. So, okay, so I'm gonna go on to highlighter. I meant to do this actually before I did my um, foundation just now, because what the way I really love to apply my Elevated Glow highlighter is actually underneath. And this is just a really lovely way for bringing more glow into this foundation, particularly if you're someone that likes to wear it in a more matte way, just adding underneath this highlighter or on top, obviously. And what's the beauty of it is that it contains very similar ingredients to the foundation. This is something that I've really enjoyed about creating my own brand because very often, even within one brand, one moisturizer won't sit with the highlighter in the brand or won't sit with the foundation. They don't all sit in synergy together. So I've been able to create them alongside each other, use similar ingredients. So it does mean that we do have, for example, the Film XL that's in here, which is the meshing ingredient is also in the foundation. So I love to do a thin layer underneath on the high points of the cheek, then apply the foundation and then just watch it all meld in together. Now I'm just applying my blush. This is my enlivening blush in pink soap. Just gonna put a nice layer of that and just watch that all melt in together between the highlighter and the foundation. Let's get that really seamless, seamless complexion. I'm just going back in with the foundation just under my eyes. You can of course use your regular concealer, whatever you like. And I have tried this foundation with and tested it with so many different concealers, different other makeup products that I know it works with anything else that you've got already existing in your makeup bag. It's not gonna reject anything. So you can carry on with your normal makeup or you can use under your eyes as well, the foundation. And in terms of pinpoint concealing, because this is a medium coverage, if you have anything quite big that you wanna cover, go back in and pinpoint. But I am finding that because it is so blurring and so soft focus that a lot of what I would normally do pinpoint concealing on is just blurred out. So I'm not really seeing it as much. I'm, I'm doing quite a lot less of that. 
So in terms of powder with this foundation, it is self-setting. So it really depends on your skin type and the effect that you want to create. So the majority of the time, I personally don't really do much powdering with it at all. Sometimes actually I use a blotting paper because if I'm out and about during the day and I feel like some of my oils are coming through, I just blot, which I find really effective. Other times, if I'm going, I don't know, out in the evening, then I will kind of powder it, but a bit later. And I think if I could give you a tip, it would be to say, let the foundation do its thing, let it settle, let the mesh kind of take effect, let it really meld into your skin before you make your decision about your powder. So I've done my lips and I'm just doing a few final touches to my makeup. Just putting a little bit of highlighter actually, the inner corner there. My eyes, touch on the top lip. And that is my, I guess my go-to makeup. It's not my really dialed down casual look and it's not my full kind of going out to a big dinner kind of makeup. It's my kind of middle zone. And for this, I use two pumps of the foundation and obviously mix it with a little bit of highlighter. Now that it's set, I, have decided I'm not going to powder it because I really like the finish. It's not too shiny and it's not too matte. If, however, later on in the day I decide that I am getting a little bit shiny, then I'll just use powder around my T-zone and I might even use some blotting paper. I can't believe it's coming out. It's actually going to be available. This has been such a labour of love and um, I know that so many of you have already tried the sample packs and you've already messaged me to say, I've got my match, when is it going to be coming out? So you're now able, you'll now be able to get your full size bottle. And for those of you that haven't actually tried a sample yet, then please go to my website and order a card. If you need help or deciding which card to order or which cards to order, then please do send us an email on support at lisaeldridge.com or you can DM me and we will be able to advise you which card to get. When you get the card, you can scan the back of it and it has a QR code and it links to a private tutorial with me where I will really help you to figure out which of those shades is gonna give you that seamless, seamless color match. Or if you are in London at the moment, I do have my pop-up studio going on in Covent Garden. So come in and we can personally match your color. It'll be my team or myself. And um, I've seen so many people coming in. I've already matched quite a lot of people, which has been so exciting. I know that a couple of the sample cards are out of stock at the moment, but I am going to be getting those back in stock. So don't panic. And this is not a limited edition foundation. Don't forget that. It's not like it's coming out tomorrow and then it's gone forever. It's not, it's gonna be restocked. It's a permanent thing that I'm doing. So um, yeah, so do, don't worry about that. This coming back in stock. Hope you enjoyed this video and I'm really excited for you to try the foundation.